Thursday, October 25th. First on the agenda, approval of meeting minutes from September 27th, 2023. Kim, do you have any edits or comments? We're trying to still get our formatting down. Hopefully this little more abbreviated format works for folks, but I don't have any comments. Hopefully there's not a lot of typos in them. All right, do we have any comments from the board list? Um, I was listed as present, but I was out due to sickness. That's what we tried to figure out. Yep. Thank you, <laughs> we'll amend them. Do we have any other, Matt? I was also absent that meeting. Good catch, Liz, I wouldn't have noticed. Uh, any other edits or comments? I feel like we, I don't think Timothy Monaghan was present either. I think we forgot to amend this section because I don't think Tim was present either. That is correct. So we're going to amend who was present. So we can take um, a vote based on the amendments stated and they can be rewritten later. It's fine. Okay, do we have a motion? Tim. I'll motion that the body of the minutes be accepted as presented. Um, the members present section would be amended as act to be accurate All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed There are none motion passes Next on the agenda projects of minimal impact report Michelle Yes, thank you uh, we only had one project uh, this month It was 21 Maple Street in the residential single-family district uh, assessor's map 11, lot 129, and it was to install solar panels on the existing roof, which was approved. Thank you, Michelle. All right, at this time, we will open up the uh, floor to public comments by visitors. I will state, just so everybody is aware, if you are here to ab talk about a specific project as an abutter, I'm going to ask that you wait until that project is presented, and then we will call up abutters at that time. Otherwise, we will open up the floor to comments by visitors. Thank you. And please state your name for the record. Happy to, thank you. Uh, Dave Witham, uh, Tenrulo Drive, um, and City Councilor here in Summersworth. Uh, I think by now most of you have heard about my uh, proposed uh, zoning ordinance amendment to reduce the size of the historic district. Uh, as I spoke of at uh, at least a couple of council meetings uh, now, I want this process to be uh, open and transparent because more than anything I want it to create a dialogue and conversation around this um, even though I am sponsoring the legislation I am not yet married to supporting it one way or the other uh, I think it's just an important conversation uh, to be had uh, there has been much conversation around uh, the historic district over the past several months as we all know and I think the community warrants that conversation uh, I would say that uh, I found uh, a tour of the historic district, or at least a good portion of it, that I took with uh, Member Brooks uh, this past Sunday uh, to be very valuable. We walked uh, a good portion of it. Um, it was very informative to me, uh, and I look forward to sort of those conversations and deep dives with uh, members uh, of this board. Uh, it surfaced at this past Monday night's council meeting that uh, perhaps uh, a workshop between the City Council and the Historic District Commission uh, might be a worthwhile endeavor, and I would certainly support that. Uh, right now, the ordinance revision has been sent on to the City's Economic Development Committee, which is a subcommittee of the City Council for their uh, first look at this ordinance uh, change, uh, and again, suggested that maybe it comes from them with a recommendation to meet with the Historic District. Uh, although it has had its first reading, uh, at the next council meeting, just by way of practice with ordinance changes, there will be the public hearing on this, uh, at which time then the council, I suppose, could act on it, or if it's so desired because it was still in a fact-finding mode, uh, could table it, re-refer it to another committee, or take any other number of actions. Uh, so that's kind of where we are in the process. If I can, I have a handout. Could I present that to all of you?
the handout I've provided is a map of the uh, historic district and the historic mill district, the historic district in the, I guess call it a yellow color, beige color, uh, historic mill district in that purplish or mauve color, uh, I guess. Uh, I used Crayola crayons a long time ago, so I've lost track of my colors. Uh, uh, the top sheet uh, looks at both districts uh, in their entirety. Uh, the second sheet outlines in red uh, the historic district uh, largely up on the hill and then the last sheet uh, focuses on the historic mill district. I'll talk to the top sheet as it combines both uh, for the purposes of the conversation. Uh, the way the ordinance is currently uh, crafted uh, for the historic district uh, in the uh, yellowish color there, the beige color, uh, there are two uh, proposed changes. It's hard to draw the red lines, I suppose, on here, but I think it's, it's rather clear when I explain it. Uh, to the north, uh, it would eliminate the sliver of uh, properties uh, basically to the north side of Winter Street. So uh, basically along the river and the railroad tracks to the north side of Winter Street. Uh, there are very few properties in that area. In fact, I think most of it is not uh, in a state to be developed, it's a very steep banking. Uh, the one property of note is right down by Market Street, which is the former Breton's Cleaners property, uh, which is now uh, a vacant lot. The other sliver that's proposed for uh, elimination uh, by way of the ordinance draft is to the easterly side of High Street between Constitutional Way and Pleasant Street. Um, starts at about the Coolidge Law Office uh, and ends at uh, the property on the corner of Pleasant Street that has the large uh, concrete retaining wall there. Um, the thought process behind the ordinance change in both of these uh, cases, uh, again, the north side of Winter Street, very few properties there. Most of the properties are not uh, in a state to be developed. And then the properties along High Street uh, are spotty through that corridor. There is a, there's a fair amount of infill through that side of High Street. If we look at the historic mill district, uh, the largest uh, area for change is to the southerly side of Washington Street. Um, and uh, you can see that depicted the area that's outlined in the darker black would remain. Uh, the area that is not outlined uh, would be uh, eliminated by way of the ordinance change. Uh, in that area, there is, uh, as I've uh, walked the property uh, this past Sunday, there are a number of uh, uh, mill row housing, for lack of a better way to describe it, I'm sure all of you could describe it better than I, uh, along Broad Street, uh, I think is a notable area for that. Uh, that uh, I, that was identified through that, that walking tour. Uh, so that area is encompassed in the removal. Um, and again, you can see the, uh, the draft is outlined there. Um, so again, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention just to be, again, uh, open, honest, and transparent. Uh, again, all of this is open to continued debate. Uh, I suppose even at the council level, uh, level uh, any uh, uh, amendments to the draft ordinance change. It could be defeated in full, uh, supported in full, or something in between. So I welcome further conversation with all of you and other community members. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Any other comments by visitors? I have a question. What's the benefit of eliminating? So comments, we really can't have a debate back and forth. So sorry. You can stand up and make a public comment, though. So he's going to go, but then you absolutely can make a comment. This is public comment time. Yes. My name is Woodard Openau. I live at 25 Grand Street. And uh, I researched and put together the Prospect Hill Historic District in 1986. And... Uh, I'd like to comment on proposed changes to that district, if I could. Uh, a little history. Gershom Horn uh, had an early grist mill in, in what it was then called Great Falls, and uh, 
he sold the land, he had sold a lot of land to start the Great Falls Manufacturing Company, and his house survives at the corner of High Street and Grove Street. There's a hair salon in there now, so you may be familiar with the house. And uh, most of Prospect Hill was his farm, and uh, he died around 1832, but his heirs subdivided the land starting in 1848, and uh, they sold a lot to the town for which to put a, the high school in there, which became Prospect School. And uh, I mean, it became the uh, the high school in 1849. And so many of the houses were built in the 1850s, and primarily in the Greek Revival style, and many with. Uh, attached barns or separate barns. And uh, this is a unique neighborhood in Summersworth and, and uh, I believe it should be preserved intact. I think that uh, if you start taking pieces here and there, it's going to destroy the district. And basically it makes sense the way it's laid out now because it ends at naturally bounding streets and uh, it, uh, as I said, is basically the Gershom Horns farm. It's an important part of early Summersworth history and uh, I, I think it, regardless of the topography or the edges of it, I think it makes sense to keep it the way it is now. And uh, also, uh, in passing, I'd like to mention the fact that Summersworth, I'm not as familiar with the downtown historic district, the Mill Historic District, but I think that uh, Summersworth has some unique surviving early mill housing, so you should make an effort to, to preserve that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I am actually from the town of Portsmouth. Uh, Could to you just get south. your name for the record first? Yes. Kevin Schmid, uh, spelled S-Z-M-Y-D. I saw in Foster's Daily Democrat that there was an issue in which a developer was in conflict with the council, uh, in which the developer wanted to, you know, build this clapboard apartment building a five over one. I would just like to say I stand firmly with the council's decision to enforce that the facade of that building is made of brick. I think that it's important to the town's history. And I'd like to point out that it may be cheaper for the developer to put clapboard on it because it is a common building material that is found in many other places other than New Hampshire. And I think that in order to preserve the characteristics of our state, we should strive to keep our standards firm. Thank you. Do we have any other comments by visitors at this time? All right, seeing there are none, last chance. We will move on to old business. Any other old business that may become before the commission tonight? None this evening. All right, seeing there is none, we will move on to new business, but before we get to the new business, I would like to propose that we rearrange the agenda a little bit, and I would like to propose that we move 85 Elm Street to position C and move Victoria Burke up to position B. Uh, discussion I think that's a good idea since they're gonna be longer and she's gonna be quicker I'd agree do we have a second on the motion I'll second all right all those in favor aye. aye aye all those opposed opposed all right agenda has been rearranged all right first on the agenda um, I just want to give a brief reminder that uh, we will call the applicant up. They will talk about their agenda, and then we will open it up to comments by abutters. 
Um, so just for those in the audience. First on the agenda, Daniel Vincent is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to relocate a window and door and remove square footage from a previously approved property located at 19 Linden Street. Michelle. Yes, so you should have received my staff memo. The applicant was before the historic district in May of 2020 and received a certificate of appropriateness to construct 916 square foot addition to the existing carriage house and detached apartment. Uh, the applicant <coughs> is now seeking to modify the approval by reducing the footprint and relocating the indo windows and doors, which was shown in his application. I did provide the history of the application and uh, staff uh, believes that this application is complete. All right, thank you. Uh, can you please state your name for the record and tell us a little bit more about the project if you'd like? Yep. Dan Vincent, 259 Main Street in Summersworth. I'm the owner of property at uh, 19 Linden Street in Summersworth. And uh, you could change, turn to page 21 I think it might make things a little bit simpler. And what you see there is a floor plan of the uh, approved project. So that square structure that's closest to the bottom of the page is part of the approved. And then to the left of that, the two rectangular sections, those were the approved additions that met the standards and the approval of the HTC. So since that approval, the two rectangular spaces have been built, but the large square closest to the bottom of the page has not be built, and it probably will not be built because of the cost of uh, materials and uh, anything else it would take to finish it. So what I'm asking to do is add uh, 10 windows, and I think that, uh, if we follow uh, number three from the top left hand of the page, we see the new window locations so that uh, these windows, uh, five, seven of them will be in the uh, kitchen living space and then one will be in additional rear of the structure itself. So everything is uh, remaining the same except for the placement of the windows. The windows are the same exact windows that were approved originally on the original submittal and will be the same uh, windows that are installed uh, throughout the, or the finish this project. So if we turn to page uh, 22, you'll see that that window is a uh, single hung window. That size of the window that we see outlined is the same window that has been used. And you can see that on page uh, 23, which is blacked out, but this would be 23 where we see the uh, facade of the existing structure. So those four windows we see right there uh, will be the same size windows. And then if we turn to uh, the next page, we'll see where the windows are going to be installed. And then the following page shows you what it looks like when the windows are in place. So that would be the left-hand side of the new addition as we face the existing structure. Uh, the following page, if you notice the door that's there, that was the same door that was approved in the uh, earlier uh, submittal. But if you move forward a few pages, you'll see that there's a door there under the gable end of uh, this particular building. There will be windows on each side of this door. And that door actually uh, came out of uh, St. Martin's Church. It was originally installed in uh, 1906. I've been uh, lucky enough to be able to hold on to that window for all this time. And uh, I'm using uh, this addition. You see the following page shows the windows in place. And then the final page, uh, you see the back side of the building with two more windows in place. So that's those are pretty much the locations I would like to place those windows. Uh, they may change a little bit depending on the room layout. Basically it's the same exact windows. There'll be uh, 10 of them installed uh, within the new structure and uh, in compliance with the original 
approval from the HDC in, uh, I think it was in March of uh, 21. All right, thank you. And thank you so much for numbering. It really <laughs> helps as we go through this. So I very much appreciate that. So I will open it up for questions um, from the board. Kim. I just want to comment, thank you for walking us through that and thank you for all the pictures. Because it made it, I read the original application and was just struggling, but the pictures were fantastic. I love that you have salvaged the door from the church. That's awesome. I, I don't have any concerns about this, but I, I open it up to people who have more experience than I do. I, I think you're doing a great job. I like what you've got going on. Thank you. Appreciate the comment. And I did forget to point out before we started new business, uh, Tim and Liz, you both are voting members tonight. So just for clarification purposes. Um, any other comments or questions? Tim. Um, first of all, Mr. Vanza, thanks for the narration. To be honest with you, I've been sitting in the HTC board since 2009. And you, hands down, do create the most complicated looking <laughs> application. However, with the numbering and the narration, it did simplify it quite, quite a bit. Um, you stated early on, how many total windows are you? Ten total. You're replacing ten or ten new locations altogether? Ten new locations altogether. So you'll have ten more windows than you have now? I don't have any now. In the, in the addition, there are no windows. Right, so you'll have ten more windows than you have now? In, right, yes. And they're all the, the, all ten will be the same style that was previously approved and that you photographed or given examples to here. Exactly. And the round nose windows, the tr trim will be the same clapboard, the same trim, the everything. <clears throat> Is that mentioned in anywhere in your documentation of the trim, the styles, the one over one or two over two? Any of that mentioned? Two over one is uh, in the uh, catalog cut from uh, the window manufacturer. So, it's, so you're proposing to have them two over one? Yes. And that was all approved in the original uh, approval back in March of 21. So you're following the trim approval, the window style approval, the size approval of 2021. Exactly. The only thing changes is the location of the window or the windows. What would you say that location change they're just because they're going to move like from here, are going to move it over a foot or they're just all together different? Well, that I'm not building that uh, square structure at the bottom of the page. So now I have some open walls right there. Right. That's where the kitchen is going to be. So there's five windows just on that corner of the kitchen. Okay. Sorry. That, that's all. All right. Matt. Thank you. And then Kim. Um, yeah, I just wanted to also thank you for your application. This was great. Uh, rarely do we see um, images like where the new windows are put in there to make it appear what it would look like if you know it is approved. Um, rarely do we see the detail, so really, really appreciate your time and effort in this application. Um, seeing that uh, you are using windows that we've previously approved, uh, you are matching all the trim specifications as was requested or, or asked of you by Tim uh, to the right of me. Um, you're using a historic door. I see nothing that I would take issue with with this application, so we'll be in support of it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Kim. And so then um, before we get too far into this, I also want to make sure we offer comments by a butter. So that's fine. After so Richard. Thanks. So it sounds like what's happening is because you're not building the, the structure that you were going to build, the 20 by 20, which would have had windows that we probably approved before I was on the board. You're now saying, hey, I want windows in the places that I am building because I'm not building the other structure, so now I need windows where I am building things. Is that kind of where we're here? And you're seeking approval to put windows essentially in the things that you are building as opposed to things that you're no longer building. Correct. Awesome. Thank you. Richard? She pretty much just said everything. I was going to point out these are interior walls, would have been interior walls originally. Now they're exterior walls. Obviously, they need windows. Um, again, he's keeping the same trim and everything. I see no reason to 
have any disagreement with this plan. So. All right. So at this moment, I just want to open the floor up to abutters or commenters on this project. So do we have any for this project? All right. Seeing there is none, then we can continue conversation okay. and we'll go with George. I just. Thank you. Sorry, forgot. Uh, Dan, I just want to say a great job. And uh, you've really done a great job so far. And I have no doubts that it's going to come out the same. Um, and look decent. I just would like to say if you, the, the door that you're going to use, if you decide you don't really want to use that door, you let me know. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I'll keep that in mind for sure. Liz? Hi. I just have uh, one question. You said that this is more or less where the windows and doors would go unless there were floor plan changes. And I just want to be clear that I think our, we're here tonight to review these locations. I don't think if he moves them, I think you'd have to come back if you wanted different locations. That is exactly why he came back tonight, because of yeah. a change in the location. So if that happens again after tonight, you would have to come back. Well, there could be a change because of a cabinet size or something like that in the inside corners. What you're seeing there for a corner, it could move the, inch, the window three or four inches. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tim? That's why I asked you, you, when you said change locations, did you mean like here, if something happens, I'm going to just put it here, or am I going to move it around the corner? If, no, it's within inches. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in support of, of this application with one condition that I'll mention during that particular moment. Um, I want to applaud you too, Dan, for not doing what was approved, which was vinyl side that property, and you kept it the clapboard, and you did paint it, and you maintained that trim. So m my position as a board member, I greatly appreciate that choice. I couldn't stand to be able to put vinyl siding on that building. <laughs> but it unfortunately was approved, I think, in my history recollects <coughs> a number, number of years ago. but. It's listed as the least changed house in the city of Somersworth in the historical district. <laughs> so let's not dwell on. Bob. No, I, no, that, that long had expired by now, but I'm just glad he didn't choose to do it. Either well. Liz, did you have another comment? Uh, no, I, I think if the windows move a matter of, you know, up to six inches or it, that, uh, to me, I'm okay with that. I don't think that would require coming back. Do we want to set a kind of parameter on that? Like, do we have a limit? Uh, other people have ideas? So that can be part of a condition as part of the mm -hmm. um, motion. Okay. If choose. Do we have any other questions or comments for this application? Or do we have any motions? I saw Kim's hand first. I make a motion that we approve the application as submitted, provided that the windows do not move more than a foot in either direction, um, or, and there's no change to... Um, any of the terms of the windows that we've talked about tonight. So not, not changing any of them significantly. Do we have a second or discussion? Friendly amendment to her condition to maybe help it. Thank you. That she should, that he shall follow the 2021 20, approvals of trim and window style. That's fine. I, I agree with your amendment. So Bear with me. Shall follow 2020 approval of window, 2021 approval of window and trim. Probably window type and trim. All right. So we have an amendment. Um, Kim, are you in agreement with that amendment? Yes. All right. Do we I'll have second. a second? We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing there is none, uh, the motion passes with that one amendment. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, Victoria Burke is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to remove and rebuild a porch and reapproval for window and roof replacement at a property located at 34 Highland Street. Michelle. Yes, so the applicant is before the commission, was before the commission September 2022 for review and approval to repair the porch, rotted wood around the base, floorboards and upper trim, replace rubber roof on the porch, and replace windows and stormers with vinyl clad windows. Uh, 
three windows on second floor facing the street and three on the second floor facing the driveway. The applicant did receive a building permit for the work approved under the HDC um, application. The building permit has expired and the work was not completed. The applicant is seeking to have the windows replacement replacements reapproved by the HDC and alter the porch uh, per the renovation plan. The applicant is also seeking to demo the existing porch construct a new roof and add supports and footings and leave porch open air rather than screened in. Great, thank you, Michelle. Can you please state your name for the record and then- Victoria Burke. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Anything you would like to add about the application? Um, yeah, the windows are all done. They're all set. Um, I was able to get those done, but my builder wasn't able to come after I got <coughs> the approvals last fall. And it's just in such disrepair. I'm very sad about it. But um, the amount of time to try and recreate the curved porch roof, and it's just rotting, literally rotting. Um, and also, I think, kind of a safety concern at this point. So um, we just decided it's probably better to just kind of um, recreate something similar to my neighbor's property. He's just got an open porch, you know, some Victorian trim posts and railings along the bottom. Um, there is no footings, the supports in place. I think he's gonna be adding support as well. So basically, that's what I'm here to get permission to do. All right, I will open it up to questions and comments. Mac? So can you talk a bit about the materials that will be used in the porch? Like, what will the supports be made out of? Yeah. Um, it, they're going to be Victorian wooden posts. Um, I'm trying to get some nice looking trim. What do you call them? The little corner. Um, the brackets. 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 Yeah, brackets. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping to save the floor. Uh, it's just wood. I don't know when the porch was built. I don't think it's original to the home. Uh, but I'm trying to save some money there. Um, so we'll be having to replace and then I'm just going to sand it all down and paint it all. Um, I think the there's stone steps where the porch entry is, and as you can see from the pictures, they're not in great shape either. Um, so he's gonna sort of, I'm not sure exactly where we're going with that, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be wood steps. And uh, will the roof be, I think in the pictures, it appears to be like a just regular asphalt shingle roof, is that right? Yeah. Will it be the same? It's not gonna be what's there. Like what's there now is sort of been pieced together over an old original very small porch and kind of they kind of built over it mm -hmm. um, and I think it's got a rubber roof covered in moss that my insurance company wants me to <laughs> take care of <coughs> so and it's leaking now too so I've got tons of leaks it's just time for it to Will say goodbye you go with the asphalt shingled roof with the yeah new probably one. a dark gray ash is something simple yep. um, you you will I don't know if you'll see, you'll probably see it a little bit more because this roof is kind of flat. You don't see it. Um, so it'll be more of a shed. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions for this applicant? Richard? So looking at this porch, it's on the right-hand side. I, we're looking at two different houses. I just want to make sure it's the white one that's your house, yes, not the blue yeah. one. Okay, so the blue one is an example, yeah, kind of yeah. what we You're ended up. You're a pill neighbor, I believe. Yeah, my neighbor. Yeah. Um, so looking at that porch, it does look like it was enclosed, but at that time stripped any details away because it's a very plain, obviously not period correct enclosure. You, uh, my porch or his porch? Your porch. Okay. That, that, that's what I see when I look at it. I think so. it was built later on. I don't, yeah, there's really no supports. If, you, if you're in it, I just noticed it's like maybe one, maybe two posts holding the whole thing up. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, I can see the roof sagging. It's, it's yeah, sad. very poor shape. But I'm, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> I still loved it. That's why I bought the house. Yeah. Um, and do you, so the only representation you have of what would be going there is what your neighbor has done. So are you it's, basically yeah, duplicating uh, that? or Yeah, and not too exact sure. because, I mean, some of his stuff is not, uh, he's got metal railings, you know. There, I think the uh, posts, the newel posts and the brackets are original to that porch that he has over there, and the rest of it's been, uh, I think, you know, it's more plastic and, and metal. Um, I would like to kind of keep it, I have confidence in my builder that he's gonna do a good job with it. And um, I'd like to keep it wood if I can. Um, 
you know, the only thing might be metal would be the uh, rails, you know, the, the, what do you call them? The, I'm not good with this stuff, sorry. <laughs> I do this all the time. Um, the handrails, like where you hold on or? No, the ones that would go between the, so you have your posts like this and then you've got the crossbar with the baluster, so that. Okay. Um, I think his are metal. Um, so I'd like to do uh, wood if I can. That stuff is all being ironed out. Okay. Um, I certainly don't have any disagreement with you redoing your porch by any means. Mm -hmm. I'm just having a hard time picturing what's going to be there. From everything you say, it sounds like it's going to be much better than what's there currently. I like what's Not there, only in but condition, yeah, it's going to be cleaner looking. Yeah. Basic, real basic, and it's um, going to be open. Um, I do want to eventually maybe have screen panels that he can come back and build for me at some point. I don't know if I'll have to come back for that or. Can I ask you when you, when is this work going to be scheduled? Uh, actually, if this goes good, he's coming in two weeks. Okay. Um, I just hard to picture what's going to be there. You the know, same kind of just imagine my neighbor's porch. <laughs> That's basically. If you can see my rounded corners, you're going to see square corners. So the big change is the roof. It's going to just be coming out, and it's going to be square. It's not going to have a curve yeah. to it. And you only have one curve. It's on the back corner of the. Yeah, it's like the around road. the back. And and the actual, um, you know, the porch is the roof is curved, and the um, that particular corner is is cut at an angle. So like instead of being degrees. at an angle, yeah. it'll come straight out. Yeah. It'll be a full square um, corner there um i i guess i'm just kind of asking for some sort of representation of what's going to be there i mean the neighbor's house we've heard people say it's going to look like the neighbor's house then when they build it it's not always the same so i'm just being a little skeptical here due to past what situations I we've been in. i mean like i guess so richard you do have a contractor sketch just not sure if you saw that I'm sorry, I missed. I did miss that. Thought that I'm might sorry. help. <laughs> it does help a bit. Okay. It's a very plain one, but yes. It's very, yeah, that yeah. was his to me, and then I drew. And I'm not an artist, uh, but I just drew basically a couple of posts, some brackets. It's going to hold up the roof, and it's going to uh, hopefully keep the wooden floor that's in there now, um, and it will be open so that. Um, dilapidated screen door that you see is going to be gone it'll be open mm -hmm. um, with some kind of trim on the top okay. so I guess my question then is are these going to be turned like round posts rather than square ones I don't have that much detail for you tonight I mean if it's if it's going to be imperative um, I guess we would not be able to do the porch because this is his window I missed it last year um, I can try and, and talk to him and see if we can get you pictures, but it's, it's not going to look bad. It's going to look good, and it's going to be in keeping with the Victorian style of the house. Okay. I'll pass for the other questions for the moment. Do we have any other questions for the applicant? Matt? I, just, I think I just want to get to some of the details too, but it's more um, I would love to see if you could maybe mirror the like railings on the front of the house. I think it just I'd prefer more consistency with what's already on the house than anything. Front of my house that was actually built not too long ago. They're not original. No, I, that I understand. It's more just um, with this new piece going in. That's also not going to be original. If we could have just a little just consistency and matching would be my request. I suppose. You know the balusters. Mm -hmm. Balusters and it looks like the posts on that are square. Yeah, they're really not anything special there pressure treated wood and somebody stuck knobs on top of them gotcha. um, I'm just trying to at least come up with a, maybe some uh, direction yeah. to go you mean on the stairs itself coming into the house yeah. yeah yeah so I mean I think I have that there I can stick a knot I mean they're not I'm taking the there's like um, a handicapped handrail I think they put on at one point the reach is kind of far out it doesn't really make sense how they built that yeah. um, but I can certainly match the balusters, yeah. and I can certainly get a little sticky feet. <laughs> don't, stick don't worry on. about those. It was more, yeah, just the styled balusters. And then my other question is, if it's not going to go, then i got to take it down, you know, which I don't want to see happen. So 
Um, I can try and get you some millwork examples, if you'd like, on the posts. But I would say very similar to my neighbor's house. So kind of going off of you, Matt, um, I don't know if I'd want to see fully square. I'd like to see some turned, um, similar to your neighbor, where I'd be okay with um, square at the bottom and the top. Oh, were you talking about the support post for the roof, or are you talking about the post coming up the stairs into the onto the porch? I was talking about going up onto the porch, yes. Yeah, okay. But. Yeah. So um, I'd be very in favor of if you have a turn baluster, um, not fully turned, but that you could have square portions. And I'm, again, in favor of a bracketing um, look to this to fit in with the style of the house. Um, I'm not opposed to losing the round part on the back of the house because, again, it's not fully visible and it doesn't look period appropriate to me. It looks like it was a later addition trying to be something that we've seen other places but not done necessarily well. Um, so I'm not opposed to getting rid of the round. Um, and we can put in an amendment. I'd be okay with it if this gets screened in later. I, that doesn't phase me, but I'm curious what others are feeling. This? Yeah, I also struggled with this application because there's not a lot of detail, so it's hard to say what we're approving. I think we're working towards kind of a list of ingredients, maybe, that we, we so might be able to put into the conditions. So you just need to see the, the specific support posts that are going to be here, and you want to see the brackets, and you want to see what kind of railing. It and I've already said it's not going to be like plastic or m metal. I, I think we may be able to describe for you what we're looking for um, yeah. tonight, hopefully. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about the sketch from your builder. So you're changing to a, a sloped roof off the house, which right. should be a lot easier for water management. And snow, yeah. And snow. But uh, so I just wanted to ask about... Um, so the piece where that between just above the top of the support posts uh -huh. and under the roof overhang, there's yeah. a, a board there that has trim on it, the cornice, mm -hmm. and it has a lot of detail to it. And I just wondered, I don't see that on the end elevation. So, and I actually don't see it in any of his drawings, and it's sort of a key to getting, you know, an accurate look. And your neighbor's porch has a very nice cornice all the way around. And so I think some consideration needs to be given to what <laughs> what happens where that that board um, meets the end what we what you'll see from the street right so you have a slope it's going to be trimmed out it's going to look it's nice I actually right. prefer to have something where the roof and the post meet those um, small like uh, gingerbread trim across uh, little tiny huh what's it called yeah <laughs> Little blocks. I'm yeah. just not good with the lingo, it's but okay. I know what I want, and I know it's going to look good, but I don't know how to tell you that. So it sounds like I'm going to have to go and get pictures of the millwork that you would like to see. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I think I'd be okay with a, a lot of this to say, oh, if it has turned posts, if it has a, you know, a shaped cap to your guardrail, if it has turned balusters, we can talk through those things. Okay. I just, I'm trying to get at um, at the end of the porch. Is, are you going to have a little sidewall on the end? It's like a triangular shape. So that, that support, that, that beam that it's runs all the way around will just turn. Um, no, it's going to be square. It's mm -hmm. a square. Liz, do you want to point at what you're talking yeah, about on I the neighbor's porch, right. maybe to help? The neighbor's porch doesn't have this. It has a hip roof, I believe. Um, so the neighbor's porch just it slopes down towards the end where the steps are, I believe. Um, yeah, you can see there's a gutter there as well. Uh, so it would be a little different. You could build yours this way with a hip roof, but that's not what the sketch shows. The sketch shows a shed roof, which is a single slope coming down off the house, which actually is probably better for water management. Your steps won't rot. Your gutters won't be as so critical. You want to see a nicer drawing, <laughs> more specifics. A little. On yeah, so it's not going to happen. I'm losing them again, second year. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> so I'll have to come back. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that just now. I'd like to hear from other members. Okay. It, it to me, is not that complicated because it's really just basic, huge pieces of, it's either mm -hmm. going to be the railing or a post or a cornice, right? The brackets, whatever. They, those are the three main ingredients. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't like my front steps the way they the rails are, but... 
I had to do it, I would. Sure. Matt, did you have a comment? Uh, yeah. Have you? And then George. I, I'm really sorry. I, I find this application to be incomplete from my perspective. Um, I, I respect you when you say, hey, I'm going to do this. This is going to look nice. But unfortunately, this board has had some problems with people who say we're going to do X and then it doesn't look like what we would hope it would look like. I, I would have come tonight. I'm sorry. I would have just, if I had known you guys wanted all that ahead of time, I would have just gotten it or gotten more information for you. So I'm sorry to waste everybody's time. You're not wasting our time, but I, I will tell you that I look at this and I, I am concerned about the slope roof versus the, the, the way that this is just put together. It feels like this may be dramatically changing your roof line, which is a concern to me. I really like the curve. I understand that it's not seen from the front, and so it's less of a significance. I'm fine if you open the porch up. I think it could be, you know, nice opened up. I actually really like the door that you want to get rid of. It looks like an older door. It's or at plastic. Least it's plastic. <laughs> from okay. Two years ago. Okay, yeah. good. So that makes me feel better about that, just knowing that that's not a wooden door. Um, I, I do... While I like the, the, hey, my neighbor's porch drawing, uh, or my neighbor's porch, I'm not sure that that's so going to... come back someday, or if I do need to have it tear and t torn down, would I have to come back for that as well? Yes. Okay. So either way, i got to do another meeting, and I'd be more prepared. I just didn't know. I can get you what you need. A lot of people have their contractors come talk to us, yeah. which is totally fine to bring your builder in to say this is these are and sometimes people actually bring us materials they bring us because we're starting over you need to see more like last year it was approved for me to do all the work that I was going to do but it just over the year over the winter it just it's worse than it was so all right well I wish I had so known we have an option to table it but um, I just wanted to get to George comments and then we can ask you if you, we can table this and you can come back with further detail um, we can also move forward with um, parts of it, if not fully. Um, so I'll just go to George, and then we can talk about that. Uh, I was just going to comment uh, what she said about the back. I think I know what you're talking about. You've got this front going, the right going up here. With yeah. No, this is not squared up. You're not going to square the back off. It's going to be the same. I'm not sure. I, I, I'll, I'll have him draw something better. Thank you. All right. So, um, all right, Tim and then Matt. Um, thank you. You mentioned that you wanted to redesign the roof to a pitched roof. It's going to be like coming off underneath my bedroom window. It's just like a, a slant, so a shed roof. S right. It's well, that, was, that will not impede those windows at all? It won't what? impede them? They're not going to, it's not going to go into those windows? No. And you also show in the sketch that diamond lattice is potentially, a, so that's something that I would be opposed of is showing the diamond pad and lattice when the pictures that you have of your house currently have diamond lattice that was attached on top of the vertical um, lattice. Around the skirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was um, actual wood, and I think last year they wanted me to make sure I didn't replace it with plastic. Right, and well, now it's got diamond pattern on top of vertical pattern, so it's. I'd be opposed to the diamond pattern. Um, I would rather have the vertical slats. Um, you talked about bracketing. Do you have any style to that bracket? Is it just a piece of angled wood, or is it a, you know, I, I just ornate? feel like I should just withdraw this right now because, like, this I, yeah. obviously you guys need a lot more than I presented, and I didn't realize that. So. Why don't we just, can we just come back to this? Well, I'll have one more comment then. Um, it was either last meeting or the meeting prior where we denied an application that wanted to take off his round roof. And I'm not sure that I'm in a different place with this application that I think that detail should be try to be maintained. Um, in the back of the integrity section of the uh, from the uh, resource form, the integrity is actually fair to moderate, and this building retains most materials and its features. And when that survey was done, this porch was taken into consideration for that. 
I'd also point out that the infill of the columns that are the existing porch with plywood panels and some two by fours is certainly not original. Um, but I do believe behind those there may be some square columns that was once an open porch like you're trying to put back. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I'm I'm with you. I mean I liked the I liked the curve. Yeah. But I have been told by many because what he, what how they made that and this wasn't made in the 1800s. So I guess I was under the perception that if it was newer, it's not as like what we're preserving something that's not exactly historic. But I can't tell you when it was built. But I can tell you that each one of those little one, they took one inch at a time and glued them. And I've been told by contractors it's a lot more money to have to recreate that. So it, it would be. Yeah. Yeah, but that's. So then we're talking about either losing my porch, which is my favorite spot. I, I'm saying that. <laughs> last week or two weeks ago we had the same conversation with another builder for another house yeah. same pro curved porch well different location um, and the results were he and they, they, they were prepared for that denial of the squaring it off and had a plan to make it round mm -hmm. so lo and behold it's going to be around so that's where I would stand but if you're you're asking for us to table this um, for well, I feel like there's a lot. You need professional drawings, and you want to know exactly every uh, type of post and stuff. So that needs. I just didn't know <laughs> it's gonna. I just needed to have all that. So, mm -hmm. well, I'll get to you in a second, Matt. Um, I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and get architectural drawings. Um, what the board is looking for is a little more detail. Of, I understand that he gave a sketch, and in some cases that is enough, but when you're saying bracketing, we need to kind of see what that bracketing is. When you're saying, you know, the supports, like I would have assumed from his drawing it was all square supports, you and know, And there columns. are no footers under there either, so yeah. it's like um, there's cinder blocks. I just yeah. don't think this house was, I don't think that porch is original from the 1800s. I just don't. Right, but and so I just want um, you to understand um, if you come back, so just kind of picture examples of what you're looking for and different things, but I will open it up to Matt, and then if you are amenable to table what it does sound like you are, we can go forward well, with that. yeah. <laughs> I don't have what you guys need, and I didn't, you know, I'm not prepared for that, so I'll get it all. But in the meantime, I just don't want it going anywhere this winter <laughs> on its own, so we'll see. So you said... Um, you were hoping to get this started in like two weeks or so, is that right? He was he was able to. Okay. Like what happened last year is we I had to postpone it and then he couldn't come. Right. And so he's a great builder. Um, and you know we'll have to table it again, and that's okay. Well, so I'll this save is, myself some money. Well, my hope is is that if this committee is unwilling to work with the applicant at this time with what we have, that if you could come back with to us within the next two weeks with a plan, we could hold a special meeting. Oh, aren't you nice, thank you. And get you. it going, because I think that right. your, your, what you're describing, like your example porch was a porch that we did approve, so I would, you know, on a very similar house, um, and I think that looking at that porch, I have no issues with what I see there, and I have no issues with what you proposed. I think it's more just wanting to chat with the builder and make sure that he's understanding uh, what we're asking so that when he builds it he builds it to those specifications okay. and that I also want to make sure you can get your porch done and not wait a whole another year because it yeah, sounds like that was the that that's a, a time crunch kind of thing so, so that was part of the and I rushed in and they were nice enough to take my application <laughs> but it was a last minute thing because I was going to miss the deadline so I'm sorry like I said for wasting people's time so um, Richard and then George and then so um, just to discuss the porch, because I know we did just have one that had a rounded corner that was a very character-defining feature, but at the same time, we've got this one, and it lists the character-defining features, and under porches, it says rear screen porch, and then it has an N for character-defining feature. So, you know, I, I do agree that this is probably not the one that I would be a stickler for to keep that curved, because it's not... It is played as one in my heart. Yeah, and <laughs> it's I, something I love. Yeah. However, but it's um, not for this house. Yeah, is and, what I'm and saying. And the side panels, everything is cheap plywood. It's falling apart. So it, it's definitely not original. So let me, yeah, and th and that's why it's not character defining mm -hmm. feature as as this survey outlines in as uh, as I read it. So 
you know, I, I'm certainly not opposed to it on the porch going up there, whether it's open, whatever. It's just like, Give you know, like when we ask, we bones and heat. don't know what to expect to right. see when it's done. And that's that's where I think we're all having the trouble. So, OK, no, that, I get it. <laughs> um, certainly not trying to be difficult. We just, no. you know, like I said, we've been burnt too many times in the past with, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to look great. And then it's nothing like what we were told. So yeah. that, that's why we're just being cautious in this. That's fine. That's fine. I'll see what I can get together. And um, maybe I could reach out to somebody on in the office. I'll let George do his and then, yeah. I just yeah. wanted to say it's probably better to bring your contractor back with you. Okay. Yeah. You he can, because you're not really 100% sure what stuff is. I just don't what know the stuff ter is terminology. Yeah. I know what I want. Yeah. I know it's going to look good, but I know I have to show you guys, so. Tim? Would it be negative to say that we could approve the platform with now this, to get the contractor on the job site, remove that existing porch, build the deck and the deck boards and then come back for the details of the trim, the roof, and the columns that get her in, in business. I think that would be dependent upon that back corner. Oh, the I, angle? The reason I don't want to, I don't know if I really want to uh, leave it exposed for the winter, too, because it's going to, we're talking November, December now. So yeah, but you're not going to enclose it, so it's always going to be exposed. Well, it would have a roof on it. So um, there is a part where we could um, allow you to start work is basically what Tim is offering, where we could say we'll allow the demolition and we'll allow you to build to this point, but then you must stop and come back with the examples before you can move forward to a point. It's up to you. We can table it or we could allow and go through the motions of allowing to a certain point. Um. Well, I'd rather have my builder involved. So I just don't know uh, what his timeline is going to be. So you would need to get something from him or have him come down and talk to you guys. Okay. Would that work? So it sounds like you are willing to table, and that's what you would like to do at this time. I think so, yeah. So I would have to reapply again once I have it. No. No. So with tabling, you would just have to come back with the materials. Yeah. Um, I know it was offered up to possibly do an emergency, but you would come to City Hall and talk with – Michelle's team and then get that scheduled okay either our next meeting or if an emergency meeting is going to be had yes all right so we will allow this applicant to table motion to table okay. second to the November 21st meeting or, no, um, or if an emergency is requested yes is that too close to we have a meeting then because of Thanksgiving Okay. All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor of tabling the application? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. If you have any questions specifically about what to bring, um, Michelle should have a pretty good idea. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, 85 Elm Street in Summersworth LLC is seeking a, an amendment to a certificate for appropriateness to alter building design and material for a property located at 85 Elm Street. Michelle. Yes, so the applicant is seeking an amendment to their previously approved design for a new multi-unit building. The applicant is proposing to alter the exterior of the building to accommodate interior use changes. The applicant is proposing composite lap siding with either exposed stamp concrete or brick foundation, which is included in your packet. The original um, uh, approval included fiber cement siding and brick. The interior use will be reviewed by the planning board, and that's it. Yeah. All right, thank you. And if we would like the applicant to come up and to talk about for the project further, and after your presentation, we will have you sit and so we can take comments. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, Robert Previty for the applicant with uh, my business partner, Ben Sebbins, and our architect, Adam Morell. Um, we've been, been before you, obviously, for a while now. Um, as you know, on October 4th, we took an appeal from a denial of this commission up to the ZBA. Uh, they affirmed your decision um, for complete removal of brick from our building, which uh, we took kind of as like a community consensus in a way of what, you know, kind of the flaws were in our design. Um, so tonight we'd like to present a, a plan um, that I think responds to some of the comments from the ZBA board members, some of the members of this commission as well, to um, take elements from mill buildings in Summersworth, particularly the Queensbury 
mill building, which has a, has a brick foundation. Um, we'll be presenting two designs to you tonight, basically, that have a kind of a stone foundation on the first story of the, the building along Elm Street uh, with clapboard uh, design on, on the upper floors. Um, the, first, the first iteration that, that Adam's going to show in a second is, is red brick. Um, that's, I think, very consistent with the Queensbury Mill. Uh, particularly in this design. We also, and I, I'm, if I had to pick one or if my opinion is given any weight, I, I kind of like the second option that we're going to present, which is a stamp concrete foundation that is meant to um, kind of look like granite because the agent's house right next to our, our, our proposed building has a granite foundation. So we really like the idea of marrying kind of the the style of you know stone foundation with clapper from the Queensbury Mill building with kind of the the granite feel of the agents building that's already on the site. Uh, so so we're presenting those two for your consideration tonight. We hope that will be received favorably, um, and we look forward to hearing from your comments once Adam presents the plans themselves. Thank you. All right, do you have something you have to show or yeah. okay? I just didn't know if I needed yeah. to move. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. For for seeing us tonight. Um, as Michelle had mentioned during the brief, um, there's, a f there's a few um, adjustments to this uh, um, application from the previously approved. That, that includes composite siding for fiber cement, as well as two alternative options for the Elm Street facade lower um, base, the foundation there, um, as we exit um, or as we um, come out of the hill uh, along Church Street. Um, as, as page two in your packet, you'll see, um, you know, some neighboring buildings in, in local context. And page three includes on-site photos. Um, these should be very familiar to you in um, the course of this process. Um, page four uh, illustrates the Queensbury Mill. Um, you can see it has the lower level of masonry, um, the brick foundation coming out of the um, hillside. Uh, at this time, that's a painted um, um, brick and clapboard above, um, lap siding and stacking windows. Um, page five of the application, you can see that this is the stamped concrete version. Um, as Robin mentioned, this one, um, you know, speaks to the warden's house and it's also a part of um, our previous approval um, was the stamped concrete. Uh, so, you know, referring back to that um, was something that we found is to be an important part of this was to um, include some of the materials that we had already presented to the to the board. Um, so this first photo shows a lower corner at Elm Street and Church. As you work your way down towards the warden's house, um, towards Lafayette, you can see that that exposed foundation um, approaches about nine and a half to ten feet, um, with the clapboard siding that we had originally had approved um, facing the warden's house at this corner. Um, and page seven is, is very much the same. Um, I know there has been discussion about the windows um, during previous um, sessions, and we still include the double windows. Um, I know that was something that has been discussed, uh, but you know, as this is a modern building with smaller um, compartmentalized interior layout, it was very important to both you know future tenants and, and the ownership team to provide more windows and more light than um, what previous mill buildings would have had that had a much larger um, open footprint. And so that was an important feature to um, provide adequate sort of interior environment conditions um, to the project. So um, it, do, it does still include that mold window. Um, page eight and nine, you'll see the 2D elevations. Um, you can see that the um, lap siding continues along um, the entry side to Green Street. Uh, so really that Elm Street r rendering, you can see um, those top four floors really, um, it's the same language around the, the entire building with the exception that the Green Street side's about three and a half stories exposed as opposed to the four stories that you'll see elsewhere on the, the building. And that's just the nature of the, um, you know, the great grade change that you're seeing across the site. Um, page 10, you'll see the brick version of this. Um, this is a, uh, a red brick, a water struck look brick, um, which was also a, uh, another material that we had discussed during our previous approvals. Um, 
same condition as far as a balance of the building um, as Robin mentioned um, I, th I think there's a favor to the the granite look um, looks better for this building um, in a sort of a subjective um, interpretation but you can see that um, providing that mass there on that first floor um, does match what the Queensbury mill has um, for its lower level so um, <laughs> And with that, um, that's really the, the, the gist of the changes, um, with the exception, um, as we previously had proposed, that lower level um, is another item that was infilled. Previously, there was a parking garage, and now there's units on that level. So. All right, thank you. I will have you take a seat, and we'll take comments by visitors. Any comments by visitors at this time? Last and only chance. <laughs> Comment? Hi, my name is Matt Tanola. Um, I am in butter on two sides, the only direct residential butter on this project. And as I've said previously, on the face of it, I'm in favor of the project. But, um, I want to just reiterate that um, we need to come up with a, a solution that's going to work both for the town and the neighborhood and for the, um, the project itself because I think it's going to benefit ultimately um, the whole downtown area and uh, the amount of people it's going to bring in. It could bring in new jobs for the downtown. I want to see that. Uh, I don't want us to forget the lessons of the uh, uh, past urban renewal back in the 50s and what happened to our downtown so we need to we need to find a compromise that's going to work for both the uh, for the for the city and for the obviously for the developers and for me because I got to look at it <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it in the hands of you folks to try to come up with something that's agreeable agreeable on both sides and uh, let's try to keep an open mind see what we can come up with Thank you. Any c other comments by visitors? All right, we will move on to board discussion and questions and the applicants can come back up. I will go to Richard because he caught my eye first. First off, let me say thank you for coming back to us and willing to discuss this further because you know, it, I know I've spoken out against this in the size wise. I'm willing to look by that. I understand we do need this as well. Um, of your two proposals, I myself, I actually prefer the block or granite look at the bottom. Um, in fact, I've walked around that area a couple times since the last time we've met. And I've got to say, I'm amazed at how much granite is around that entire property. Um, I mean, there's got to be hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces of granite. Is there any chance you could use some of that granite to, even if not actually build the building with, just to put along the yeah, front and yeah, actually we, have we are, it? Yeah, we are trying to reclaim some of that granite. I think, I can't remember if it was in your, your, H, your approvals or our planning board approval, but we've committed to doing that, and we would like to do it anyway, just because, as you say, there's a lot of it, <coughs> and, and it's beautiful. There, there's some benches that carve out of that mm -hmm. granite and possibly do some ribbon with that granite. Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to basically yeah. kind of, yeah. <laughs> on the, uh, I don't mean structurally, but just kind of like use it on the wall for the basement area is just kind of a, just a thought I had because, it, like I said, it just seems like there's so much of it there. Um, or if, if not, I understand there's a parking area going on next door, maybe save it for the retaining wall there if nothing else because mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're going to need a retaining wall of some sort there after the, the hotel the old Summersworth Hotel comes down, so I just don't want to, you know, lose out on all that old granite that could certainly add character to this mm -hmm. scape, you know, the environmental scape or built retaining walls that might be needed there. So just a thought to consider there. Um, I really don't have a problem with the clapboard, all in all. 
looking at the windows, I, I've actually looked at all the proposals we've discussed from the very beginning to the most recent one. And something that caught my eye was the very first one you guys brought to us actually had paired windows the entire length of the building. So it has exactly that mill look that I was thinking and have you know expressed several times here is could we do them paired windows the entire way so you have that standard one style of window the whole way like mill buildings always seem to have um, and maybe lose those white panels in between the windows because again I, th I think that just puts a modern look to it that is what loses the character of the district so that's just a couple observations that jumped out at me at first that I'd like to express and hopefully you'd consider that and with that I'll just leave it to other people to ask questions as well all right anyone Matt thank you um, I have a few questions but um, I think I'm more curious about like the process that we have in front of us tonight like what we will ultimately be deciding on um, I mean, we have two possible um, proposals right uh, are you folks thinking of tonight in terms of how you first came to us originally with the uh, conceptual review are you looking for feedback are you planning to come back um, or are you looking for one of these to ultimately be decided now I mean ideally we'd like a decision tonight um, just because we you know we've been in the pro in the design process for a long time and you know further kind of further design iterations the ballot amendments like could be just open ended but if if the consensus of the commission tonight is that there's kind of that there's general support for the project with some design changes depending on what those are we'd be willing to consider a redesign um, you know to 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 the extent that the changes are are not you know, I, I think one concern, I went back and watched all the HPC meetings, is if you go back and watch all of them, you have board members that switch halfway through what they want. So I think we're open to look at minor changes that aren't going to have us redesign this whole building six more times. We, we just can't, everyone has their own design point that's so subjective that we can't please every single person what they want because then it's a mishmash of a building and it, and it just, just starts to look silly and then we have to pull things out and it just goes back and forth. And I would agree because I don't <coughs> want to have another meeting where we agree upon a design and then you all come back with a new design as well. Um, so a few questions if that's okay. Um, in ter I think a lot of the issue, a lot of the hangups have been around the brick, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Um, and I, I, in your proposal, it sounds like, at least with the brick you're proposing, the new, the new proposal, um, you're talking about actual uh, brick veneer, which is great. Um, and I think certainly is a little bit more cost effective. Um, in your like original plans for the previously approved design, were you also planning brick veneer, or had you thought it would be full brick? Uh, so. Technically, uh, brick veneer is a full brick. Okay. Um, it's just not load bearing. Uh, so there'd be a stud wall behind it. Thank it's you. still that consideration. It'd be you know a full okay. brick size. Um, and then, is there? I, I believe there is, but I, I don't know if this is something that you've looked into. But is there some sort of like stamped concrete for like brick appearance like, to look brick, mm -hmm. but with stamped concrete for, again to lower costs? So the. You, you can speak to the yeah. There's, the, the, there's ways to stamp um, and brick to make uh, stamp concrete and have it look like brick to an extent, but you're just applying a paint to your concrete. Um, you know, in I can't guarantee how long it would continue to look like brick. I yeah, guess. And, and I guess as to these two designs that we're presenting tonight, we're we're kind of. Um, like we like the stamp, we, we brought forward the stamp concrete option because we thought it fit well with the agent's house and, and we thought it was an elegant <laughs> complement to the clapboard, like in terms of coloration, and we thought that it, it, it worked better than the brick. Um, as to like the material in that location, whether we use the brick veneer or we use the stamp concrete, we're, you know, 
were agnostic. Mm. Again, I was just trying to think of alternatives to allow for more of the brick appearance on the building with less uh, cost for you folks, because I know that was the concern. Um, I'm going to yield to others, because I, I do have more, but I want others to have a shot. So thank you. Liz? Yeah. Um, so this is my first time reviewing the project, because I'm new to the commission. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And I actually, I mean, I can see that a lot of, you've put a lot of care into these, this design, and there's a lot that's good about this. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited about the project and bringing more density to downtown. And we're all, um, so there's that. And I just, I had a couple of small comments. Um, one, I, I, I mean, I like the way you've used the darker tone on the, to create variation. I, I, I heard uh, from Richard that he doesn't appreciate the the white um, vertical, but I actually think that's really important because if you didn't have that and you use white trim on this dark piece, they would just stand out like applied, you know, stamps <laughs> basically on the facade. So I, I do actually like that. Um, I do have a question though on um, the north. Was it? Sorry, I think it's page four. Your Green Street elevation. Mm. No, it's not page four. Um, but the the Green Street. The end cap, basically, uh, the Green Street, where you have a step in the facade, and you go back to, at that point, you use uh, the white infill. And mm. this, the drawing, the elevation's actually cut off. This one? Uh, yes, yes. That, that's the one. Um, this, and then the side view of that is cut off. It looks like you were proposing white um, uh, on that inside corner of the dark piece, right? So uh, it shows, I can find it for you. Shows on elevation, courtyard elevation north on page nine. Oh, courtyard. Yeah, and I see white and then gray. Yes, and yes, th that's the, uh, you know, there's a step there. That's the far end of the step. Um, and it does appear that it's slightly cut off in the view. I mean, I, for one, would prefer just that whole west elevation and that little white sliver there on the, on the north for that all to be the dark theme. Um, it just, it just kind of adds a lot of... <laughs> extra complication to what is really a pretty basic L-shaped building and in, in its massing is like a mill building, but at this kind of end, it sort of breaks up and tries to be something else. So I, th I think I just prefer to see it all one end cap continuous material. Yeah. Can I ask one follow-up question to that? Yeah. Um, on the Church Street side, we do have the flat plane there. Are you okay with it on that side? So Church Street would be the, um, so, we were just discussing the, the right-hand side of that page would be the top left-hand side, as well as that first rendering you're seeing. Yeah, I mean, ideally, it would look just like the Church Street, but it doesn't because you have the step in the building. Yeah, and it's uh, a matter of the program as well as the um, building uh, footprint relative to the setbacks. Yeah, I it. figured there was a reason for it, so I'm not pushing back on the massing at this stage. Um, I just... Um, yeah, it just seems a little awkward there, and I, I'm proposing a, a solution, but you could also propose a different solution. <laughs> um, and then the other question I had is a small one. It's about on the the basement course on the um, on Elm Street. You have the two exit and entry doors there, and I don't know if um, if you're, if you're going to come back later and want to see. Uh, have you considered if there if you need any small roof or awning at those entry points to help identify them, help people find them, stay dry when they're unlocking? Um, I think a portion of it is to, you know, this is really just for a tenant entry point. Um, mm -hmm. The idea would not to be advertising this point to be the main entrance of the building, um, the main entrance being on the inside of the L, mm -hmm. on that inside corner. And so uh, the approach has been to sort of downplay it, um, but I wouldn't, assume that would be opposed to any modification to that. It's, um, I, I think it's okay the way it is. I just didn't know if that was something you hadn't really considered yet. <laughs> um, and uh, also, just my last comment, I do also agree. I like the stamped concrete for granite look. Um, I do object to calling uh, or equal in here. I think we have to approve the specific material, and you've provided one, and, and I think if you want to buy something else that should come back to us just to reprove that sample um, if you change the product. Okay, thanks. 
so I'll go next. <laughs> Didn't see any immediate hands. Um, I was very happy to have you guys come back. Um, you definitely took my comments from our last meeting about alternative stamp concrete was one I was asking about veneers that looked like brick, not necessarily being brick. So I was very happy that this came back. I'm also very happy that for me, as I'm reviewing this, I am looking very much to Queens very mill and just for those viewing at home because this is probably the best example of what you're working with within our town itself our city itself um, I agree that you know keeping to that first floor I was really surprised that I too went around the, the building and I actually really like the stamp concrete a little bit more when I was standing by the museum looking up the hill but when I came around Green Street, where we don't have any of that veneer or stamp concrete, um, I think if this level was up there, I would have wanted the brick more. But again, I think it's appropriate not to, to um, mimicking that Queenberry Mill going up the um, side of the hill and then having that being a you know, shorter uh, facade up there, um, that you're missing that story. Um, I actually would be okay with either the brick or the stamp concrete. I'm kind of going into your thought here, Richard. Um, I do tend to agree with Liz on the windows. And the only reason I say that is because when I'm looking at the Queensberry Mill, and I do know that these are probably later additions to it, they did have some paired windows. Um, and for me, it also kind of helps define this as a new construction building. I don't think anybody's going to really mix this up with an old historic mill don't get me wrong with that but I think it also helps define that these aren't big open rooms kind of idea but that's just again my personal opinion on this um, yeah I think that's the only comments I have because I think other t board members have kind of got in there Richard so if we look at page seven when I look at this view you see very minimal of those white infill between the windows. It, you see more just clapboard. And, and that's, that's where it looks more like a mill to me. That's, that's why I think losing those white panels between the windows, it just looks more appealing, looks more mill-like to me. This is why, you know, and again, I don't, I don't think we're going to confuse it with a new building or old building that way. But I'd still love to see, you know, like I said, even if it's the paired windows all the way, I'm fine with that. Just a uniform window. And, yeah, the stamped concrete to make it look like the, the granite block, I'm fine with that, too. I actually prefer that now that I've seen it. Um, and I hope I'm not one that's been flip-flopping. I've been saying all along, I wish this was just one big flat facade looking like a mill. You know, and I know I voted against it twice because I've stood <laughs> by what I've said. So, um, you know again i just i think those would be the improvements that would make me say this looks like a mill this looks like it fits the character of what we have in our historic district already and that's it's just where i am mm -hmm. so i'm trying to look out for our district and try to keep a character and i don't know how else to explain it and reiterate it to you mm -hmm. so all right any george uh, i want to thank you guys for coming back uh this really looks good I'm, I'm really loving the uh, the stamp brick design and uh, as we mentioned in the very beginning each time you came here the granite uh, I'm just happy to see you're gonna use that granite somewhere uh, it's just really uh, it, I don't care what you do with it as long as you use it uh, and that's all I got to say is I, I think it looks great and I think you guys will do a good job thank you Appreciate it. Matt? Thank you. Um, I also do think in the pictures, I do prefer the stamp concrete, but I'm, again, the, like, I have a, a painter, I don't, just for pleasure, it's like a thing that I enjoy doing. And so half of me is wondering how much of it is just due to the color combinations of the siding. Uh, the grays match much better and appear to look better with the gray siding and the gray stamp concrete, whereas the red of the brick doesn't go 
like color wise with that and I'm not here to say you need to do your siding a certain color because I have no purview over that but my one my question or maybe not even question but my comment is it could just be more if there was a different color for the siding we might actually be more willing or uh, prefer the brick because of just the appearance of those color combinations um, but that being said as presented I do prefer the stamped concrete um, my question is though um, that stamped concrete is only visible on that Elm Street side and is no is not going to be visible on any of the other sides of the building even on the inside the Green Street side and so my question is is if you look at the Queensbury Mill um, on the back side where it goes into the hill you see raised um, stepping of the the brick on the Queensbury Mill and I'm curious of uh, your willingness to do that uh, so that we can see that uh, stamp <coughs> concrete around the entirety of the building uh, so it's not just on one side uh, and it is actually visible around the whole thing so some some portions of the building just like one of the things that's also apparent in the Queensbury Mill is how it kind of tapers into the hill mm -hmm. that's what we were trying to you know call to in our design as well mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to kind of if you could maybe Adam just find yeah. one of the the images that kind of runs not so much here but uh, that runs kind of along uh, Church Street or along the agent's house if we try to bring as much of that the the uh, first story stone stamped concrete mm -hmm. Um, along the public ways. I mean, we have a, a large portion of this building that's just like kind of in, in you know, it's off the street. You know, nobody sees it. doesn't really affect the kind of like the neighborhood, so to speak, it's, it's particularly with the way that the hill slopes. Um, yeah, yeah, so I mean, you can jump in whatever yeah. you want. But. Um, another portion of that is that um, even from the high elevation on the Elm Street side of the site, working to Green Street, um, as you can see in the elevations on like page nine, um, <laughs> In a lot of places, our finished floor is actually below grade. Um, so we do have a little bit of a um, foundation extension, but then we hit the window portion. Um, in order to accomplish the stamped concrete look, um, it's really the portion of the exposed foundation that is receiving that stamped finish. Um, so in order to do that, uh, it would really complicate the layout of windows and things. Um, so those were some of the mitigating factors on also not continuing it across the face. Um, is because there is such a long grade there. Um, you would you'd end up turning that, you know, the three-story or the four-story section really into one level of concrete, two levels of another material, then you'll have your white band and then another top. So it, for it, wedding cake kind of layers yep. um, was one thing we were trying to avoid. Could you accomplish that with the brick veneer, though? No, no. I, if if we switch, if we look at like the first one, right, or the first proposal, the grading would certainly be an easier condition there, incorporating the windows. Um, mm -hmm. I think the amount, the percentage of materials that you have on the facade as you go to that four-story section where you have so many breaks, um, it turns the building vertical uh, conditions to a horizontal condition, um, like how those materials break. Not sure um, if I understand. I'm not following. It, it, it's not. It's not going to look good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Well done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Because we we did like play with that a little bit. It just like it. It. Wedding cake's a good analogy, but it's just it's it's not a good design. Um, it's also kind of like it. The way that the uh, Queensbury Mill works is that. That's really responding to where the actual foundations were. Mm -hmm. and here, like the, the the rest of the building, which is kind of massed differently than what's along Elm Street, doesn't really have that same exposed foundation. So, in our first work session, it was actually we had a building that sort of looked a little bit like that. Um, if you don't mind, I can show you what that would look like. Sure, <laughs> please do. I, if you don't mind me throwing in a couple two cents on this. I, th I think it's because it's such a long, gradual slope this that it doesn't blend well with doing that. I, I think couldn't. it works on Queensbury Mill because it's a steeper slope. I don't disagree. And like I was going back looking at that stepping area, and the windows do go up. And I think if we tried to mimic that, I'd be a, kind 
kind of like going, oh, what did we just uh, yeah. do? I, I don't think it would be beneficial. The, yeah. The, the, the change in the grade is a really complicating factor in all yeah. aspects of, and, this, and of this building. You're, so. you're talking hundreds of feet, yes. and it's only going not even a floor, right. whereas Queensbury Mill, you're, you're gaining a couple floors and maybe 100 feet. Exactly. So yeah. it's, it's just such a different steepness that it doesn't – Blunt doesn't work well on this building. Is how I'm trying to reiterate. That's where we came out a little. Right. Matt, did you have anything further? Nothing further. All right. Any other comments or Tim? What's the dimension of the pattern of the granite pattern? I don't have that um, immediately available, um, but the idea would be, you know, um, 18 by 30 or um, 24 by 36. Um, approximately that size but um you get, you were last here to propose the siding instead of the brick foundation aside is there a difference between the proposal from last time to this time excluding the foundation uh i don't understand your okay so the topic so of discussion tonight has all been based on brick veneer foundation, stamp concrete foundation. However, the last occasion that you were here, you were proposing to remove the brick facade and put clapboard. So my question is, we're not, not to talk about the foundation, whether it's exposed or brick or stamped. Is there a difference between what was discussed last time you were here with the clapboard siding versus this time? Uh, no, I, I think so what we did, like our thought process was we, we, we took the plan that was denied both here and at the ZBA, kind of took comments from both you, your, you know, this board and from the ZBA um, about kind of the, the way that brick and clapper, stone and clapper are used together in mill buildings in this area, particularly the Queen's So area. the difference between the denial from the ZBA and us is that you've added a either brick or granite foundation. Yes, consistent with the Queensbury Mill. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Richard. So the, the previous approval that we did actually approve that had the foundation, uh, the parking underneath. Mm -hmm. Looking at that, you know, I'm just looking at the windows here, so I'm not trying to focus on the foundation either, just mm -hmm. to the windows. I see a pair of windows, single window, single window, pair, single, 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 and then it goes back into pairs eventually. That's what I'm seeing that time. This time, I'm seeing a lot of pairs, only a few singles, but it does seem to be a lot more pairs. and. I like that uniformity. That's that's what I was trying to get across, and I appreciate that it looks that way now. I just love to see that uniformity the whole way, if possible. And again, the white panels between. I just I'd rather see clapboard the whole side, one facade. I just think it cleans it up, makes it look like a mill building. So, if if we're talking about windows and siding, that's where I'd love to see it go, and with this. And then back to the foundation briefly. The stamped concrete looks mm -hmm. good because, again, it looks like that first agent's house next door that does have that large granite slabs for a foundation. So, you know, I, th I think it blends in well because of that as well. Thank you. Um, I'm going to play off Matt's comment for a minute because, <laughs> like I said, I did go back and walk, and I was looking at the other house next door, and it's the gray stamped concrete. But I am now wondering, is my personal opinion because of the brick color? <laughs> uh, last time you were here, I, I'm, this is just for curiosity um, comment, it seems like you've kind of decided on the gray and the blue. Last time I think we had a green option. Just curious, um, is that kind of out the door? Your guys are, we don't d take color. I'm just for strictly curious. Like if I could if walk out of here with like my building permit in hand, I'd probably be building the, the gray blue option with the stamp concrete on the bottom and but i do understand like, you have to go to other yeah. boards it's just uh, uh, but you know <coughs> i understand the point that like the contrast between brick or stone and and the color of the clapper kind of affects how you perceive it i like if i'm going to put a finger on the scale like if it were me i really like that 
the Stamp Concrete kind of plays off of what's on the agent's house, mm -hmm. just because I know that it's been kind of like a focal point of the overall redevelopment of the property. So that's that's kind of how it come out. Right. And we obviously, our names are going to be on the building. We'd like it to be something that looks nice and is aesthetically pleasing to the community. So we, you know, we try to be consistent with our colors so that they all look good and hang together. And the other reason I'm kind of going this way is when I was standing down there, I was looking up the hill. You know, we all know where it's at. I feel like the larger stamp concrete look, I feel like the massing of this building, it kind of helps um, not make it blend as much, if that makes sense, where you can actually identify, okay, that is stamp, like those are blocks. Those are supposed to look like blocks, in my opinion. So where like looking that far away, I'm like, okay, yeah, I could tell it was brick just because of the color, but I don't know if I would be able to tell from that far away, um, like if it was just a painted facade or any of that. So I'm just, that's just kind of where my head went back after your comment, Matt. So I guess we're, and then when you started talking about the size, um, I know you don't know exact, uh, it will depend on the pattern, but um, just curious, like I, guess me personally like the idea of the little bit bigger pattern but that's me I'm just curious if the board has any opinions on that Matt yeah I think if I were to pick for the stamp concrete I would also say bigger pattern um, I do have another question but I'll let others answer yours before I jump in with I just have another question I'm I don't I don't really care either way on the stamp concrete versus the brick because I'm voting no regardless, but I have another question. Okay. I'll let Matt jump in. Thank you. Thanks. Um, my question is about the bump outs <coughs> and their size and depth. Uh, so again, like you have like, I believe there are the stairwells are kind of a little off, like pulled out from the rest of the facade of the building. I think it's stairwells. Um, but looking at like the actual floor plans, I don't see them visually represented in the floor plans, and I'm curious if that's if that's I did, I'm not familiar with how designs are built and whether those would be included in there or not. But I just would love some clarification onto like the actual depth of those bump outs. Yeah, uh, those those bump outs are one foot. One foot. Okay. Thank you. Kip. So Tim asked you if you were changing anything else on this plan from the previous approval. On page 18 of the documents you gave us today, it says on the top left corner, proposed material composite siding, manufacturer's all side, model ascend composite siding, specification seven inch exposure. It then says right next to that, previous material, fiber cement siding, manufacturer James Hardy, Hardy plank lap siding, night gray, smooth eight inch exposure. So are you proposing tonight that you are changing that material? since that says proposed material and previous material, or did that somehow get through the original documents? Because that's different than your other proposals. Uh, no, sorry, if we misunderstood your question, that is a substitution of material. Okay. Um, but we weren't, I wasn't sure exactly if okay. that's what you were so asking. So when Tim said to you, are you changing anything else? Your response was <laughs> no, no, and that's, that's not that's what's why I was, happening That's what I was here. thinking, because I, because I thought Tim was referring to like, window placement, the bricks, like the physical design, not the, like the brand of, of board. Uh, you know, I, I don't see how that. Well, with all due respect, it's not just the brand of board. It's a seven inch exposure versus an eight inch exposure, which gives a very different look on the side of the building. Is there anything else, gentlemen, that you're proposing to change tonight? We're happy, we're happy to pass it out. And obviously if we, like, I forget who mentioned the change of materials, we'd have to come back for what was approved, right? That's Yeah, that's, so part so of my concern is the lack, the change that goes through with you, and I get kind of disparaged for my level of aggression, but when he said to you, are you changing anything else, your answer was no. So let me ask you before we look at the materials, what else, gentlemen, are you proposing yeah, to change oh, oh, today? Okay, okay. Okay. It's in the packet. What else are you changing? You can go, I mean, if we want to play this game, like, you can go through every. It's not plan. a game. We asked you a question and you no, weren't so, honest about so I it. I will, no, I was not honest. I answered the question I thought it was being asked. You can go through and run a red line for yourself on every change for every plan and determine it. I just won't answer that question. I won't be helpful on that question if I'm going to get targeted later on. I mean, this isn't a cross examination. All right. No, but so it's a record. Hold. hold. <laughs> Please. All right. So 
We are on proposed materials. Please everybody turn to page 18. We have proposed materials and previous. So let's go page by page at this point and see if there are any specific questions about the new material versus the old material at this time. Do you want to show the material results? Do we have any questions from board members for page 18, 19? Because those are the materials in question. And Tim, you had specifics about um, material. So I want. Well, <coughs> the specifics were, in my opinion, that this board heard a proposal to change the brick siding to clapboard siding. That was denied. That denial was upheld at the ZBA. This proposal is to remove the brick and put clapboard. We've heard that case, in my opinion, is we've made that decision. Um, in my opinion, there's no difference by the meat of it, except for the stamp concrete on the foundation, there's no difference in the denial that we denied and the ZB upheld. So in my opinion, the application as presented here is not much different than the denied application that we heard last week, last time. Correct. To get to the heart of what you were asking, and anyone can correct me if I'm incorrect, the difference is strictly the foundation material at this time. No, that's not what they just said. Well, we've been discussing the foundation and the appearance of stamped concrete and brick, but they're not proposing the brick to be reinstalled as siding. I understand why, and I, I understand everything they've said. But my understanding is that discussion took place the last meeting, that they were going to not, they were proposing to not do brick siding, they want to do clapboard siding, and they're here to say, well, we, we don't want to do brick siding, we want to still do clap siding, but we'll do stamp concrete and or brick foundation as a trade. Um, although the foundation details were not discussed to the last meeting that I recollect to this detail, um, we denied the removal of the brick. And then that appeal was also upheld and, and supported that decision. I feel it would be wrong for us to reverse our own denial and reverse the ZBA upheld. I guess I don't feel your way because, again, they had clabbered on this foundation level. So I don't understand how you feel that this is the same. This is what was approved. Correct. And that's not what they're here to ask for. Correct. This is a new application Correct. on a new design. But the basis of the first denial was to not do brick or to do brick, and we all denied them removing the brick. They're here to ask the same question with the, with the caveat of we'll stamp the foundation or brick veneer the foundation. That's why I asked the way I asked it, is there any difference between foundation aside between last application and this application? And the answer is no. So why are we hearing it if we've already decided on the siding of the same case? That's a point of law or order. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disrespecting them. I appreciate them coming back with the due diligence they have. They've obviously been here for, uh, they've first had an appearance here one year and two months ago almost at a date. Three workshops through that. Um, they've been back and forth, and I get it. Their last attempt and their only um, submission was approved, and it was approved with the brick siding. I get that. This application is to amend the brick siding and add stamped foundation. But we already denied the bricks, the, the removal of the brick. And that was upheld with his, an appeal. So I, I just not understanding the ability just to continue to ask the same question and ask and think different answers. I'm just, I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. All right. So I would say 
and then again this is me that i look at it as the first floor level on one of the sides has changed so to me that is whether you consider it a siding change a foundation change that's changed from the first one so whether this was approved or not approved a change has been made just like a previous application tonight they proposed changes so that is why it's back before us so where we fall on that i get where you're at but um i guess i'm not understanding why we're questioning that change because we just saw another board uh applicant that came back because there was a change so i just want to make sure okay richard so i i kind of get where tim's coming from but I'll say I've, I know I've already voted against this twice. I voted against it the first time, just sheerly the size of it. I thought it was out of place. Mm -hmm. Upon further discussion, hearing other plans, thinking more through it, I'm overlooking the size of it. I voted against it the second time because I think having the brick strips going up it kind of gave it a different facade. It looked like building, like half done buildings instead of one big facade like a mill would have. So that's why I voted against it the second time. That's just my opinion as one person. Tim's obviously looking at it a little different. And I'm sh unfortunately, we all look at this a little differently. But I see the plan different from what we denied, the board denied, that went to the ZBA because <clears throat> it removed the brick and there was no brick whatsoever. We now have brick or concrete block on the basement level so some sort of rock masonry material is going back on so we're kind of getting some back and you know like I said after I after seeing it I kind of like the cement block or the stamped cement that looks like granite block because again it blends with the big house next door and the foundation level and I see no brick climbing up the side, so it looks a little more like a mill, but still we've got those different colors, the bump in, bump outs. I think it takes away from looking like a mill. So, you know, I, again, we all look at this a little differently, unfortunately. I wish I wish we could come to a more of a consensus and not just between you and us, but between us ourselves. And that's that's why I, I go back to picture 11. It's just the best view of it looks like a mill to me. I, I We have the strips there that stick out that are a little different color I, I'd love to see it all the same maybe if we have that bump out where you get that little bit of an angle five degree angle or whatever it's pretty minor but to transition that I'm okay with that maybe even the big chunk at the end but maybe not all three little strips that are there and, and again this is just my opinion and I, I almost want to just make a motion on this and try to make it happen at this point because we've been too long at this. I, I wish we could have made this a faster process through everything. Um, but I'll let other people have a say, but I'm ready to make a motion with a few amend amendments to your plan, if you will, and let the chips fall where they may. Maybe it gets approved, maybe it doesn't. I have a real issue with, we're supposed to approve this. We have specifically said, is the only thing you're coming here to change the brick facade issue versus the stamp concrete. And in fact, midway through, we find out, no, there's other proposed materials that to me are significant. Eight inch exposure versus seven inch exposure is significant. I, I'm wondering what else we're missing and I am reluctant to even have a vote on a material application change until we know absolutely everything that is being proposed to change. If we're gonna vote today, then I think the, the only vote can be, we only give you permission to do stamp concrete or brick we are not agreeing to any other changes in any other materials that we have previously opposed because otherwise you're giving them carte blanche to change materials that we, that we have not discussed, that we have not seen visuals of, that we have not seen materials of. And that's concerning to me, particularly with this group. I understand your opinion. I will let the board discuss this, but I will tell you for me personally, I don't know that it would change my vote from a one inch ex or eight inch exposure to a seven inch exposure. Um, particularly, I get other members are gonna have different opinions. So if you do have those examples, I'd like for them to be passed around. 
but um, any other comments or questions around the materials? Matt. Thank you. Um, I think if we were to accept the proposal tonight, those changes are included in the packet. These gentlemen are not trying to like pull the wool over our eyes, I don't imagine, because they do outline on page 18 and 19 previous uh, and currently proposed material changes. So if we approved it, it would be approving the things that are outlined in the packet here in front of us on page 18 and 19. Um, I think it was just a misunderstanding of what was being asked. Um, um, yeah, no more from me. I have a question too for the applicant. Mm -hmm. The on 19 when you do mention the two different proposed different composites was that based on changing manufacturers from you went to all side to um hardy plank or the other way around yeah another similar option is like lp smart side if you're familiar with that mm -hmm. um so it's going from full concrete to uh composite of wood and pvc type thing <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah, the all, the, <coughs> the all sides is a, um, a sorry, the technical term um, that they refer to it as is um, fiber board. Glass fiber reinforce enforced polymer. It's less susceptible to expansion and contraction versus the hardy plank. I'm familiar. <coughs> Um, if anyone who isn't familiar with Hardy Planks, visit CVS and look at the wall, and you'll see how that's all busted up just from being installed correctly. So, um, and I want to be clear that one way or the other, if it all looked like this gray siding and stamped concrete, personally, I don't, I don't care. My point of order was. Did we or did we already not hear this case? And wasn't a decision already made? And is there a re ability for us to reverse such a decision after it's been appealed? That was my point. And I don't believe we do. So. All right. Further conversation, questions, or do we have a motion? I believe, Richard, you said you might have one. I'm willing to make a motion. It might be a little wordy, but we'll try this the best I can. So based on the plans that you're presenting tonight, as displayed with the stamped concrete foundation, the thin bump out towers. So if we're looking at the green street side, the two of them that are not, so there's three, the center and the right hand one as you're looking at it from Green Street. Remove those two, let it be collaborated the whole way without the bump out. Leave the big bump out at the end on the church. Are, are you, I have a are feeling you, that's a stair tower. Are you talking about Elm Street or Green Street? Elm Street. Sorry, I thought you had said Green. Are, are those stair towers? Those little bumps? Uh, no. Okay. And never mind. Oh, uh, I'd be leaving the one bump out at the, like that minor angle basically to help with the transition because you got to have something to transition it. Leave the big bump out that has like three sets of windows in it, wraps around the end, so you get that bump out at the end. And basically keep it at both ends and inside by the courtyard entrance. So you would end up with three of those large bump out areas in that big, in the darker gray. But everything else be the light gray. Lose the white panels between the windows so it's all clapboard. And dual windows, you know, the paired windows so it looks like four window panes to each set of windows. So that it kind of gives the mill building look. Can I 
ask one clarification. Uh, another way of looking at it, would it essentially be um, the bookends of the ends of the building yep. and the center entry um, will be the darker components. Yeah, let, let, it, let those bump out still yep. with the darker panels on those. And then at that five degree corner or, or yep. that Leave small. Leave that thin tower for that whatever and that essentially is, remove the rest of them? Is that yep. another way of looking at yep. it? Yep, exactly. So you just have that one thin one there where that angle is. I think that would let me read it back so I understand your proposed changes and if I have to point at pictures to help clarify this I'm we more than willing to, to. <laughs> so you're saying you would like the proposal of the stamped concrete foundation all thin bump out towers removed leave end bump outs the bookends uh, um, on on both the church street end and the green street end you know in the size that they mm -hmm. propose okay and then you said and also white also, panels between the windows yeah be between the floors you know they make a vertical line out of the windows I just I think that gives it a modern look that just takes away from the mill building look and you want um, just vertical uh, clapboard there yeah just a typical clapboard in place of those panels or sorry horizontal clapboard And there was also a bump out on the courtyard inside corner where the main entrance is. That would still be there as well. So That's the darker gray. Main entrance bump out. Correct? All right. So let me rephrase. All right. So motion to have stamp concrete foundation, then bump out towers removed, leave end bump outs at the end, the bookends on Church Street and Green Street. Uh, remove white panels between windows replaced with horizontal clapboard leave main entrance bump out Is that correct uh, yes. sorry uh, did you want to also include the five degree one the the leftmost one on Elm Street yes that one yes on Elm Street that that one would remain because like I said it's got that angle there if you didn't have it you'd have to have some sort of which street funny. was it Elm, Elm street. yeah on Elm all right do we have a second for this motion? Do we want further conversation around this motion? Liz. So a couple points. One, are you saying where those towers come out, you want where there are single windows, you want double windows? Is that correct? I, I'd love to see double windows a whole way so it looks like a mill building. <coughs> May, um, and then I have just a point, like a clarification question for you about the point of order. So if I, I disagree about the windows on the paneling between the windows. If these windows were the same color as the siding, I would be all for getting rid of the verticals. But given that they're white on the dark siding, I think that the verticals are necessary. So if I don't agree with his motion, I don't mean to vote. Like, do we have another chance to yes, vote on the Yes, we could project? do. Um, you can ask him to amend his motion, or mm -hmm. you can let it play through and then a new motion if that one does not pass. Okay. A new motion. And, and this would, of course, leave, like, a, I'm guessing what's about a four-inch trim around the windows. So you'd have a white trim around all the windows. Yes, you would. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? All right, we have a second from George. All those in favor of this, please keep your hands up. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right, motion does not pass. So I think <coughs> I will take a stab at it, Richard. Um, I tend to agree with Liz. I don't love the idea of getting rid of the white. I also am not a fan of getting rid of the bump outs because that was something that I particularly liked when this was first designed because I particularly like the bump outs. It breaks up the facade. I feel like this would feel even more massing um, to me particularly um, to have that all one and the reason I say that is if you look at oh, sorry I think it's 
nine, eight, um, the south elevation. With those, without those bump outs, I just feel like that looks so big with one color just leaving a bookend. But that's me. Again, Almost like a mill building. We all have our own opinions. But um, so I would say I will mimic that. Move forward with the stamp concrete foundation. And honestly, I probably wouldn't change anything else at this point because I don't mind the windows as stated and I don't mind the bump outs. So second and discussion option. We have a second. Do we need any further discussion? Richard? I just think we're breaking it up and it don't look like a mill building to me. It looks like a modern piece together structure. Well, I also go back to Queensbury that has bump outs. If I may add a little comment yep, to, the, to the bump out aspect from a design and, and structural side of it, although these are not stair towers, it is common to have stair towers on mill buildings that are even more pronounced and somewhat detached from the facade of the building. They're almost built exteriorly mm -hmm. and then clad. So you could climb up the set of stairs and then go into the doorways on the particular floors. So from a design aspect, in my opinion, that the bump out serve as a feature of potential stair tower. That's why I asked. I thought they may have been a stair tower. We have the stair towers on the, on the uh, north mill here. They're more near the loading dock. Um, I do believe that you'll find there's a few shoe shops over in uh, Rochester that have those existing stair towers from a mill building. However, then you have another mill building, much like Queensbury, that has no stair towers. Those stairs are all internal. So they're both arguments have merit. All right, so we did have a second. Do any further co conversation or discussion? Seeing there is none, we will take a vote. Please, again, keep your hands up high so I can keep them. All those in favor? All those opposed? The ayes have it. So your po motion passes with the stamp concrete foundation and everything else as stands. Wait, can I point of clarification? Everything else stands. We're not amending anything else, right? As stands as in this packet with the proposed material as stated. Okay. I understand. Any questions on that? No, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And if I may add, just for the record, my no and denial was based strictly <laughs> upon the fact that I believe we've already heard this and it was already denied. Noted. Thank you. Next on the agenda, workshop business. Any workshop business that may become before the commission or that we need to have further conversation on. I know we just had a workshop right before this meeting, so I'll just uh, let those at home viewing know that we are um, looking into doing plaques um, and for the historic district and partnership with possibly the historical museum. Um, so um, the Somersworth Historic Museum. Uh, but we are looking into that further. A subcommittee has been formed and another meeting is going to be, we said, on the 15th at 6 p.m. So if anybody would like to join, I encourage you please do so. Um, and we will have further comments next time from the HDC around that. Any other workshop business tonight? Matt, do we have anything on the street signs? Oh. No. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh, I was a little bit so hopeful. We need a PO. <laughs> Any approved. updates? They're approved. They are approved. But, I don't know. But no, no updates, right? Michelle? Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting on the wayfinding signage to bring it back to EDC so we can bolt this project together. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Any other workshop business? Any workshops anybody wants to propose or anything further? Seeing there is none, we will open it up to communication and miscellaneous. Tim. Um, looking for an update on the previous requested items, such as um, signage downtown in the HCC. I realize that a lot of it has now been adjusted. So if we could get the city planner to comment on that. Um, one other thing as well is the 
stone wall that's on Winter Street that's a repetitive item from my perspective because it was one that was originally constructed without a permit uh, with, or without approval. They returned to us. We granted them the approval as long as it was going to be clad in stone and it's not completed and hasn't been for well over a year and a half. So looking for that update. Uh, as far as Winter Street, uh, Shane, our code compliance officer, has done research that property has changed hands three times since this at last came into approval. So he is reaching out to the new property owners to try and get this back into compliance. Um, he sent out a courtesy notice of violation. Uh, next steps is a notice of violation. And signage? Signage, he's been working with the businesses downtown. That's why they've been adjusted. Um, last, unless anyone else wants to comment on those particular items. Um, what's the status of our tree need? I mean, if I want to cut down a tree in the HDC, it still has to come before us. Oh, I know we worked on that. I might, my memory's escaping me. I thought it was 12 inches 12 or more. Inches. 12 inches or more and not considered sickly. Um, like you have to provide proof that it is. So a few weeks ago, a quite large, seemingly healthy tree was removed from the park that's next to what once was the city property, which was the police station. And that tree is gone. There's a stump there now. And I don't remember having them come before us it's to not, ask permission to cut that tree. Not in the district. It's not in the district. The police department is not in the district? No. Nope. Wow. I know. Okay. Using the buildings. Was it Rosanna, Rosanna, Dan? Was it? Never mind. You'd be a... You'd be amazed how it's many. It's better to ask than not. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> You'd be amazed how many buildings on the National Register are right next to our district, but not in the district. Well, they went down that corner and then cut off the behind yep. the gas station. No, nope. the cut yeah. off before the police station. Even our post office is not. Ah, mm. that's weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Preservation Park on the National Register, not on the district. It's. Mm. I definitely think the lines need to be adjusted, but. Well, I was going to say, Mr. we Rhythm, actually had a conversation brought up, <laughs> and, you know, maybe other considerations should be taken into account around that as well, maybe. The weirdest misalignment has to be how it jogs around to, to two mechanic buildings then back to the street again. I never understood how that happened. Gerrymandered was an excellent term someone used for this. Any other, Tim, before we move on? I saw George first and then Matt. I would really recommend uh, Dave's uh, opinion of uh, having a workshop with the city council on this because I, I do have a couple of concerns on it myself. So Very much agree. Matt? Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to comment on. So thanks, George. Um, I sit on the Economic Development Committee and will be my, uh, I, will, I will happily be requesting a workshop uh, from them. Uh, to be proposed uh, specific to the ordinance changes that we heard uh, about tonight. So I'm hoping the rest of the committee agrees with me. I certainly will make the case for it. I uh, will let uh, folks know when that meeting is scheduled. So if you're interested in joining just to watch, you are more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, that, that was my hope was to also request that. Um, because I think there's a lot more to it than just the changes. I think there's a lot more that could be discussed too. So. So on, on that topic, the Economic Development Committee, are members of the HDC allowed to attend that as well? Yeah. They're open to the public. Uh, there's no uh, public comment period during those meetings, uh, but you could sit and watch, certainly. Or be, it, it, rules could be suspended to have you invited to speak to the proposals also, oh. if uh, right. counselors were so. I, I would certainly take the opportunity to discuss it even at that level if possible. I'd be more than willing to find the time to attend that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good to know. Tim? Has the New Hampshire Historic Preservation Society been advised of the potential outcome of whatever we're talking about here? Because they have a lot to do with grant money and It's actually things. New Hampshire Division of Historical I'm sorry. Resources. Yeah. And, uh, I have Thank not you. reached out to them at this point, but they're coming to our meeting in January. I do believe a member of this board did reach out. I don't know if they received um, communication back, but we can check in on that. The member that reached out to those group did not receive reply. Perfect. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> um, 
I do request also that um, my ask Michelle if she can look into because we are certified local government um, if the uh, the grants that they offer would cover um, having a review done of the district from a professional or having someone from the National Register weigh in around that as well because I believe that is one of the things that their granting process would allow for. When was the last survey? Was it like 1986? Seems to be what a lot of our pictures are is 86. Well, there was an original survey done. 2014. Um, uh, like uh, one of the speakers tonight, but then there was another one done for our board that uh, built on that, then that's what we get all the time for what it was saying, um, contributing factors, non, and I think that was 2013. 13? So it, okay. it was a it was a multi-year process phase one two three it was I think right. five phases five and the fifth phase. one ended in 13 and I think it started in seven and like 14 which is so correct yeah five different maybe yeah, not maybe sections. not every other year but yeah in sections throughout those that span of years but then I think 86 was the last time they looked at the district in its entirety right and the difference um, just for everybody um, that survey was done specifically for our board to understand what we are looking at um, like contributing factors non-contributing age of the house different things it would not have been um, like a district look at as a whole and like what the contributing elements from the houses within that district so those are a little bit different as yeah. the overall yeah so 86 looked at the entire district Right. not individually at the houses then Correct. from 7 2007 to 2014 they went and looked at each house individually and right to give us better the house individually um, uh, every one so of we them. can have better uh, guidelines for how we're addressing those individual items so yeah I'd just be curious if that falls within that purview of grants so all right any other communication and or miscellaneous tonight not to be remiss, guys, but I hope that we didn't just make a mistake with 85 Elm Street, and I'm going to put it on the record because I have real concerns about what that's going to look like, what it's going to look like for that house, and what it's going to mean for the house that it sits next to. Just, you know, we all voted our conscience. I'm consistent in thinking that is the wrong building for that spot. Not that I oppose development. I would love a beautiful development there. Not that one. Not with these builders. Any other comments or miscellaneous? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I see second. a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.